Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and welcome to a brand new Oxygen Not Included Spaced Out DLC series. This playthrough is gonna be suited for beginners and experienced players alike. We will be extremely organized, get into all the mechanics, build simple and complex contraptions in order to master the game. Without any further ado, let's hop into a new game and of course we're gonna choose Survival. We're gonna play this with all the standard settings on Terra, the mods and the seed will be in the description. Right here, Ren, Marie and Jean are going to be my starting duplicates. I decided to go with two diggers and one researcher. In the beginning, we'll have to do an awful lot of digging. I want this to be completed as quickly as possible and of course also the research shouldn't take that long. Ren is gonna be even better because he's starting with mole hands plus another three excavation. We also have the heart digging skill already with Marie. And then finally, Jean with the mole hands trait as well, since whenever she's got nothing to do is also gonna focus on building and digging. We will talk more about traits and roles of your duplicants in the future. Here we are, beautiful, always looking forward to a new beginning. Of course, right in the beginning, we wanna hit the pause button in order to get the first cycle planned. During the first cycle, we wanna take care of some of the duplicants' needs. First and foremost, we need a bathroom, and we're going to need a place for them to sleep. Later on, we'll also have to deal with needs such a place to eat and oxygen and other needy stuff. Maybe first of all, let's have a quick look around. A couple of water pools that we need to take advantage of. We also have the teleporter system that goes to a second planetoid, which is not going to be important in the beginning. We are mostly surrounded by sandstone, have some copper that we want to dig up, maybe actually for the oxygen production. Before we do anything else, let's have a look at the priorities and the only thing I want to change in the first cycle is enable proximity. It might not even be that important since our base is very small, but they will tend to go to jobs that are closer first dependent on their priority. What is far more important is we want to have a look at the schedule and we want to make sure that most of the schedule is work time. We only want to give them like two hours of downtime and two hours of bedtime. Actually, let's just keep it at one downtime slot and two bedtime slots so they have as much time in the first cycle to do their job. The first thing I want to do is open this up a little bit, maybe gather up some materials so we already have some copper, some coal. Actually, the coal we don't need, but the sandstone in order to be able to build some stuff. So we're gonna unpause the game and just give them a little bit of time to take care of that. You can see here the oxalite. This is actually giving us some fresh oxygen in the beginning so we don't have to worry too much. However, eventually, once all the mass has been consumed, they will disappear and we'll have to take care of another source of oxygen. Actually, if you can avoid digging these up until they disappear on their own, that's a good thing. However, if you cannot avoid it, it's not that dramatic. It will just take a little bit more time to off-gas everything, but you will not lose anything. Good, now that we have a couple of materials, we are capable of building more tiles. What we are going to do in this playthrough is have one shaft in the center going all the way up and down the world. I want the middle section to be 10 tiles in width, so we have enough space for a future organized pipe system. At this point, I want to kindly ask you to please support this series as much as you can. If you can spare a like, you would do me a huge favor and the success of the first episode is gonna greatly contribute to the longevity of this series. I want this to be a long and successful series, but I'm gonna need your support. Also comment, I will answer every single comment. Even if I get thousands of comments on this video, I will answer each and every one of them. So thank you so much. If you can spare a second to support this video, you are awesome. Now with a bunch of materials in the joint, we can get into the next planning phase. I want to leave a little gap free in order to build a transit tube later on as well as a ladder shaft. But essentially what we want is exchange all of the sand tiles if there are any. And we will also want to dig up these plants. This is going to be the area where we build the first temporary bathroom. And then on the other side, we're going to have a bedroom. Within furniture, we should find our bedroom. And of course, we're gonna need as many beds as we have duplicants. So let's just do one, two, and three. We're gonna dig a little bit further because right here, we might want a ladder shaft to access the water. And in order to do that, what we're gonna need is a pitcher pump that we're gonna place approximately here. On the other side, as mentioned, we want a bathroom. We want the wash basins in order to wash their hands on the right side. Once I know a little bit more about the layout, we're gonna probably deconstruct these again and switch them up a little bit. But for now, we're gonna have two outhouses and two wash basins. 
And once again, I want to make sure we exchange the sand tasks or where there are no tasks, but we're not going to do these other tasks just yet in order to save some time. They are eagerly going to work. That's just what I like to see. And as soon as we got a little bit of copper, I also want to implement some pneumatic doors. The doors are going to be important in order to define the rooms. Now, I think we should be able to place the door right here. And I want to make sure this is actually closed off. They can build up to four tiles high. And what this is going to do is make this a room in order to improve their morale. Right up here, we have all the different overlays. We're going to go through that through the series, of course. But the room overlay right here is going to tell us what each individual room requires and what benefits we'll be getting. We're going for the latrine here, but it needs to be a closed off room, maximum size of 64 tiles. And we're going to benefit from plus one morale boost. A duplicate's morale is going to be directly connected to their skills. So the more morale they have, the more skills I can assign them. Same thing as with the Latrin, we also want to give them barracks. So we'll have to make sure this is a closed off room. So I want a door maybe right here and another one there. In order to speed everything up a little bit, we're going to hit medium speed or we can also use the tap button. I mean, it's always so relaxing in the beginning. Uh, also with the frame rate, I just love 60 FPS. Makes me happy. Marie has just finished the first wash basin. What we want to do is make sure this is set to the correct direction. So they will first go ahead and take a poop before they actually wash their hands. Otherwise, sometimes they're going to wash their hands twice, which doesn't give us any benefits. Just using up some time and water. But here we go. We have almost a completed room and we can already see this actually counts as a latrine. It looks as though we have a little bit of spare time to keep going. We also already have access to the water. So I'm going to go down to the next level. I want to make sure this is four tiles in height. And we can already start planning out our first research area. We want a manual generator in order to produce some power. We also want a battery and I'm going to leave two spaces free. So later on we can add a larger battery. We want to go ahead and connect this with some cabling, of course, and then we might want to go into the science station. There is our first research station that we can place right here. We can also click on something, hit the B button in order to build that. And we want to go ahead and connect the station. Of course, everything also has to be excavated and this should give them enough to do in order to take care of the first day. There's actually something else we can build already, namely the oxygen diffuser. This is going to take some algae in order to create more oxygen for us as soon as it is necessary. In the beginning, this is the best option, but also has to be powered. We can now also see the bedroom has been finished, so we're going to already profit from plus two morale boost even before the first cycle has finished. On the right side, we can see all the new resources we have acquired. In the beginning, I want to clear everything and I actually want to choose what is being displayed here. For instance, we want to keep track of our algae. Since once we're running out of algae, we're also going to run out of oxygen. Checking the cycle time and our schedule soon enough, they're going to go into their downtime where they're going to grab some food. They will also take a poop and afterwards go to bed. And there we go. We just had not enough time to complete everything, but they are now eating. They actually first attempt to take a poop before they eat. However, if there are not enough outhouses, they are going to take turns. It is now already nighttime. Everyone should hopefully go to bed. Come on, you should make it to bed in time. Wonderful. However, now that we completed the first cycle, I want to give them individual schedules. So we're going to add two more schedules. What I want to do now is give them two downtime slots, two bedtime slots each. However, they're going to be working in shifts. I made the experience with three shifts. You're mostly good because there's always someone awake taking care of potential problems. Eventually, my three shifts are going to look something like this, evenly distributed amongst the day. However, in the beginning, they're not going to need as much downtime since they're pretty much always close to the starting area and they will not have to come back from afar. So now I want to make sure each one is in a different schedule here. Gene, you're going to go right there. Also concerning the bath time, this is not necessary to set specifically. They are just going to do their bathroom tour in the first downtime slot. Also, after the first cycle, I want to start to specialize them a little bit. For instance, I want nobody to do the researching. So we're going to set this to disallow for everyone except Gene, who has the skill and the interest in it, is going to prioritize it. Ren and Marie on the other side are going to always prioritize building and digging. So we want to set this to the highest priority. 
a new day has dawned, they are actually going to keep on sleeping until their stamina is completely full again. As long as they make it to bed in time, we are good. In the second cycle, I want to take care of some research, so maybe we should have a look at that next. The first goal we want to achieve probably is taking care of their food needs, so we're gonna need access to the farm tiles as well as the electric grill sooner than later. So that is the first thing we're gonna focus on. My two builders should be taking care of everything else, I'm already gonna start digging out the area a bit more, start with our expansion, we might want to limit some of these rooms. 64 tiles is the biggest size of bathroom we can make, so these are gonna be our limitations for the bathroom. Gonna exchange all the flooring tiles as well as the ceiling, even though we cannot quite reach that. We can now keep on going and just let them do their thing. My ladder system is gonna continue upwards for just one more level and we're gonna have another ladder right there. This is gonna be exchanged with a transit tube eventually. But on the top right here we also wanna free up some space and just as an indication this is where we're gonna continue the ladder system. Over here I wanna get myself prepared in order to build our first farming area. We're gonna start with meal wood. This plant right here, we need approximately 5 meal wood in order to supply one duplicant, so at least 15. However, considering we're gonna take on more duplicants very soon, we might wanna go with even more. However, before we can do that, obviously, we're gonna need to do the research and we need the space for the farm. In the beginning, the farm size isn't that important because whenever you dig up one of these cracked tiles, you have a chance of finding some more food to gain some more time. Now, I just realized Jean is still building, however, I want her to do some operating now. She should be using the manual generator to get the research started. Yes, the priority system is gonna be extremely important to get your duplicants to do what you want them to do. And here she is, doing a phenomenal job at researching. In terms of food, we can actually see how many calories we have on the top here and what they consist of. Normally, one duplicant is gonna eat about a thousand calories a day. This way you can calculate how many days you have left until your colony starves. Our first research has been completed, nothing we can use immediately. Well, actually that is a lie, we can already go ahead and set up the ration box. I want to do this at the lowest point of my base, because the carbon dioxide naturally accumulates in those places. And what carbon dioxide is gonna do for us is it's gonna have the food in a sterile environment and therefore it is never going bad. In the meantime, we can keep on digging here a little bit. I want all the algae. Actually, somebody needs to supply the algae. Hopefully, my next duplicant is gonna come with the correct traits to fulfill that job. Ah, ah, okay, there you go. Actually, Jean just did something horrible. She went to the outhouse and then grabbed some food in order to eat it. We want to prevent this from happening as good as possible. So what we can do, for instance, is increase the priority of our ration box. At the moment, everything edible is going to be collected here, and if we set this to the highest priority, especially in the beginning, they're gonna bring all the food over here. However, I think right now what we could do is actually remove all of Jean's priorities, so she is gonna take care of that job, and we might even wanna lower the digging and building for the time being. Now we can actually see with the new priorities, she's collecting all the food, bringing it to the ration box right away. Eventually, of course, we want all the food downstairs, but as long as it's not in the bathroom on the floor anymore, I'm quite happy. Especially for the starter food, which cannot go bad. She now also supplied the oxygen diffuser, which is gonna generate more oxygen for us. However, this is why we need to keep an eye on the algae, we don't want to use it all up. New ration box is in place, I'm gonna copy the settings of the first ration box, bring it over here and we can go ahead and deconstruct this one. Wonderful, we have our first printables available from the printing part, let's see what we get. Otto could be the perfect candidate with farming. I was hoping for someone with supplying, but we need a farmer anyways. He's got decreased machinery and decreased construction, both of which for the farmer are not gonna be important. So Otto is gonna be our fourth duplicant. We can keep him in the first schedule, that is gonna be fine. His priorities, however, are gonna be changed to prioritize farming. New duplicants are also gonna come with a skill point right away, which we could spend into farming. However, he's already got plus 12 in agriculture, so I'm actually kind of tempted to also get into grilling, so he can actually make use of the electric grill right in the beginning and cook up some good meals. So what I'm gonna do is actually wait until we get the electric grill and then I'm gonna spend this point. However, what we definitely need is a fourth bed and that needs to have priority, so Otto has a place to sleep tonight. 
in the meantime, while we have nothing better to do, I also want to make sure we keep on building our ladder shaft. And I want to do this in a pattern like this, for instance. This way we can always make sure some of the materials are dropping on the floor here, so they have access to building materials right away and they will be a lot quicker building these ladders instead of having to go all the way down here to collect the resources. Whenever possible, you also don't want to kill off these creatures because we are going to use them to make some critter farms later on. There we go, we're actually done with the research, which means we now have access to the farm tile in the food category here. We should find it and we want to fill up this room with all farm tiles. We have 16 tiles right here, it's not quite enough for 4 duplicates. However, as mentioned, with all of these cracked things we are going to dig up, we should be good for a good amount of time. And we don't really need the 5 meal wood per duplicate. At this point, I might want to have a look at the research again. I'm gonna go for the coal generator. This way we save on duplicate time. Nobody has to use the manual generator anymore. And coal is actually something we can keep track of. Especially in the terror world, we should have plenty of it. With the research done, we now actually have the capability of creating a mess hall or a great hall even, which gives us the biggest morale boost. It's very important we take care of that as soon as possible. I want to go ahead and already set up this next room. So that's going to go right here. We want to also place a door in there. And then within the furniture, we have the mess tables. I want to leave two spaces free in the beginning. And then we're going to set up as many mess tables as we have duplicates. The farm tiles are being built currently. Whenever we have a new farm tile, we want to go ahead and already plant a meal wood. We can then simply copy over the settings in order to plant more of those. Maybe for the oxygen flow, we want to go ahead and remove these two tiles. We can also exchange it with a pneumatic door, which lets air flow freely. And also with the new farm, we might want to keep track of our dirt, since we're going to be using up the dirt to fertilize the plants. So yeah, instead of two tiles, we can simply have a pneumatic door. It will still count as a room. Not important for the farm room, but maybe eventually we want better airflow for our other rooms as well, which would then be an option. Another research has been completed. We should now be ready to exchange this battery with its larger brother. I wanted to wait a little bit in order to use up the excess power, but now we should be ready to take this apart. In the meantime, of course, I always want to make sure we keep on digging. I don't want to open this up quite yet because I want to keep the carbon dioxide stored in here. But this is essentially going to be the place where we keep on building ladders and digging downwards. I'm now actually going to move around a couple of things. For instance, the oxygen diffuser is going to go one level up. I also want to make sure we deconstruct the manual generator as soon as we are done with the basic research. I'm now going to add the larger battery. There's going to be space for another large battery eventually. And we also have the space for the first two kinds of research stations. Naturally, everything has to be hooked up with the power. Oh, we had a little ceiling collapse problem. You always have to be wary of that. Ren, actually, you should go ahead, move down here and dig yourself out of this mess. He is currently suffocating a little bit. Thankfully, the game kindly reminds you of that. Thinking about this, I might want to set up my first coal generators on this level. So let's lower the floor by one more tile. This way we have the space for the coal generators. In terms of efficiency, we're going to run into a problem. If we want to run the coal generators, they're going to waste a ton of coal unless we have smart batteries attached to them. To attach smart batteries, we're going to have to go all the way down into the automation. So we're going to need access to automation wire and also access to refined materials. To get the refined materials, we're going to need a rock crusher. So yeah, we should actually go for the rock crusher before the coal generator. This is also going to give us the water cooler that is going to be useful to us. Another thing I tend to do is if I have two pneumatic doors, I'm going to lock the upper door because for some reason they sometimes tend to prefer the upper door. It is now also time to access the pitcher pump from the other side. So I'm going to exchange this with tiles. This is also going to allow us to expand the bedroom for the next duplicate. I'm already going to go ahead and actually initiate this process. As long as we keep it a closed room, we can gradually expand it. Wonderful, Jean just earned her first natural skill point. She is our researcher and soon enough she's going to have to go into advanced research using a different research station. So that is going to be our logical choice. Another thing we can already build is the electric grill, even though in the beginning I don't really recommend you to cook anything up, especially not the meal wood if you have them in a carbon dioxide environment. There's no real use of doing anything with the meal wood, but I like to have access to it right off the bat in case we need it. 
We have reached another important stage in the game. The first outhouse is actually full. It needs to be cleaned up and it is going to produce some polluted dirt that we want to take care of. At the beginning, what I recommend you to do is set up a storage bin somewhere inside of your water pool. In there, we can store the polluted dirt and it's not going to have the capability of off-gassing. Also, if you have the time and space for it, I recommend you to set up a wash basin. Whenever they interact with the polluted dirt, bringing it to the storage, they're going to be full of germs and this way they can wash it off right away. Marie also just received a skill point. We're going to set that into super hard digging right away. And I'm also going to give her the super hard digging hat. She deserved it. With that skill, we're going to be capable of digging up more of the terrain that wasn't accessible to us just yet. There she is, all eager and happy. For shicks and giggles, I'm actually going to go with a second oxygen diffuser. Sometimes they actually have to catch their breath and I don't like that for my research projects. We have just completed another research. I'm actually going to make use of that right away by building a water cooler in the mess hall. This should theoretically upgrade the mess hall to a great hall and it's going to have absolutely no downside to us. By the way, if we click on the outhouse, we can check the errands and here we can see what priority this errand requires. Cleaning the outhouse requires tidying and at the moment, of course, nobody is taking care of tidying. Otto is taking care of the farms. He's got nothing really else to do. So what I'm going to tell him to do is not prioritize digging and building. And we're actually going to upgrade tidying just for a moment until we have another duplicate more suited for this job. Finally, Ren also gained his first skill point. It's going to go into hard digging right away. I'm also going to give him the hat and I'm actually going to finally give Otto the grilling skill because he's got more than enough morale. There we go. Otto is cleaning the bathroom. He doesn't look too happy, but that's just what he needs to do right now. As soon as he's done, he's going to have some polluted dirt produced, which we want to store in the storage bin. We find it under organic polluted dirt. I want to make this a fairly high priority, maybe seven. Looks like we already got access to another duplicate. Researching, farming, no. Decorating, also not the best interest right now. We might just want to go ahead, take the hatchling care package for the time being. There we go. Jean actually just grabbed the polluted dirt. And if we check her out, as soon as she puts it in there, she's going to be full of germs. And therefore, the wash basin is going to be mighty useful. Another thing you can do if you want to free up duplicate work is disable disinfect for your outhouses as well as this storage bin. However, I really don't like germs in this game, so I'm not going to do that. Wonderful, we just got our first meal lice in the joint. Right now, as you can see, they are fresh 100%, however, unrefrigerated. And if we have a look at here, we can see this is a sterile atmosphere. So they need to be brought into the ration box as soon as possible. Everything that's new is already going to be selected here. And we can see Ren is actually already going for it since we have nothing to build at the moment. Uh, never mind, he decided to drop it and go to the toilet instead. However, research is completed. We got access to the rock crusher to create our initial refined metal. We're now going to unlock the ceiling light, the duplicate motion sensor, as well as the automation wire. These are the three things that I'm most interested in. But we should also have a look at the refinement and maybe already set up the rock crusher. I'm actually going to do this right here on the other side. This is going to be moved eventually. But for now, it is important we get it up and running. There it is, all done and ready. The only ore we currently have is copper ore and we maybe want to use a ton of it in order to get 500 or so kilograms of refined copper. We got the ceiling lamp and flower pot researched. The ceiling lamp is actually going to be mighty useful, probably in furniture. If we add this right here above our research stations, Jean is going to be just that much quicker at her research job. We also obviously want to connect this to a wire. Another thing we can keep on doing whenever we have nothing better to do is expand our floors. So we already have a better idea of our base layout. Actually disable the water cooler so we don't use up unnecessary water to refill that. But it still will count towards the bonus it is supposed to give us. Another thing I tend to do is build a couple of storage bins in order to clean up certain areas. For instance, the mess hall, we want to clean this up so we benefit from the increased decor and potentially upgrading this room. Within the storage bin, we actually want to store everything but we want to set it to sweep only. This is going to make sure I have to specifically tell them to pick up everything, which I'm going to do right now for this room using the sweep command or the K shortcut. And we can see Otto is actually eagerly taking care of that job. Wonderful. Thank you so much. 
I always want to be prepared for the next duplicant, so we're already gonna give them a mess table and set up a bed for them. At this point, I actually want to give Jean back her researching priority, and then digging and building is gonna be the next priority, so I want to make sure this is a little bit lower, but still higher than everything else. Actually, I was lying. Of course, operating needs to be our second priority until we have someone who's taking care of manual generators and the like. You know, in the beginning, we gotta be a little bit flexible with the priorities. Eventually, everyone is gonna have their job and it's gonna be pretty balanced. If you wanna make everything a tiny bit more efficient, I recommend you to open up the doors so they don't have to wait for a split second in front of the doors to get everywhere. The room bonuses are still gonna count. We are done with the research, that means we have access to the duplicant motion sensor that I would like to set up maybe right here. We want to make sure this detects the duplicant that is working on the research station and then we want to hook up a automation wire between those points so we don't have the ceiling lamp running constantly. And then the next thing we want to do right away is research the smart battery. This is going to allow us to automate the coal generator and we can get rid of the manual generator. Soon enough, we're also gonna have our first full wash basin, which is gonna give us germy polluted water. We don't want that in the joint, so I'm gonna exchange this with a door and we want a simple setup in order to take care of the germy water until we have a really good solution for it. So we're just gonna open up a little space here and we wanna set up a bottle emptier facing this way where we are gonna output the polluted water and just let it accumulate here until we have a better system in place. Another research completed, the coal generator is available to us. I'm gonna set up my first one probably right here. Two right off the bat, we want to make sure this is connected to the system, but not quite. I also want to leave those two tasks in place, so I'm gonna reroute this a little bit. And I just want to get close to our first wire, we don't want to quite activate them until we have the smart battery in the joint. One thing I totally forgot, we are missing the advanced research capability with the supercomputer. That is the next thing we have to research before we can do the smart battery. So still a little ways to go. I also want to make sure we put in a pneumatic door in here right away because right now it doesn't count as a room anymore. We're building the coal generators. The supercomputer also has been researched, which I'm gonna place right here. Adds up perfectly and makes me pretty happy. Jean is running the hamster wheel like a crazy maniac. Probably one of the last times we actually need to use the manual generator. We got some more printables. Unfortunately, not anybody I can use. We already covered the farming and cooking. This would actually have been a great duplicate. But we're gonna go for the egg care package. Those eggs are just gonna drop on the floor. We can choose to let them hatch or actually make omelets out of them. That is actually another thing I want to prepare. I'm just gonna remove these two ladders. We should have access to the egg cracker that we can place right here. Up to this point, we were doing quite well with our morale. However, it is now time to upgrade the mess hall to a great hall. Within furniture, I have the flower pot that I'm gonna place right here. This is the last item required to upgrade this completely. And then, as mentioned, egg cracker goes right there. Within the flower pot, I'm gonna plant a briar seed. This is a purely decorative plant. We're now actually almost done with the smart battery research. In preparation for this, we can already set up some automation wire and we want to connect both of our coal generators and hook it up to our battery. We're also going to go up at this point. This is where I'm going to set up the smart battery. We're only going to go for one smart battery in the beginning. It's all that is required to send a signal to switch off the coal generators when we have enough in our battery. The smart battery has been researched. We want to wait a little bit until we have enough refined materials. So a couple more crafts on the rock crusher should do the trick. Thank you very much, Marie. There it is, actually. That should suffice. We're gonna deconstruct the manual generator, replace it with a smart battery. We only need 200 kilograms of refined material. We're gonna place the battery right here. It should already be hooked up. No, actually, I need to continue the automation wire here. The smart battery only has half of the capacity of the jumbo battery. However, it is quite more efficient. So eventually, we'll probably end up with all smart batteries, but we'll see about that. For now, I'm just gonna need one. There she is, the beauty smart battery. I wanna set the high threshold to approximately 95% and the low threshold to, let's say, 50%. So at 50%, the coal generators should turn on, and at 95%, they are gonna stop. The reason you might want to do 95% is because there is an animation to it, and the animation always completes. And I believe the rumor is you don't risk losing a tiny fraction of your energy if they stop their animation at 95%. 
At this point, we are also ready to actually connect this, so the coal generators do supply our batteries. They will produce 600 watts of energy each. The way the energy works right here, we have a potential load of 1000 watts. So theoretically, this is already overloading. However, you can set up as many generators as you want to the input, so we shouldn't run the risk of overloading these wires. However, if you have enough machinery drawing the power over a thousand watts, then you are going to damage your wires and you will have to upgrade them. Also a little bit dangerous with the coal generators is you are producing a ton of CO2 that we will have to take care of in the future. Now at this point we covered all their needs, bathrooms, sleep time, they have some food, they also have a source of oxygen, so we shouldn't run into problems immediately. We can now take our sweet time to plan out the next few steps. To determine what this is going to be, we might want to have a look through the research. What could we potentially research to make our job easier? Considering our current starting area, we might want to go into plumbing in order to be able to pump out the second pool of water. So this pool right here, I want to pump this all up into our first area. This is going to allow me to continue digging and explore the world a little bit. With the spare time, I'm also going to set up an additional outhouse and wash basin, just in case I run into a situation where none of them are available. And we certainly don't want to skip bathroom time, you will regret it the next day, with duplicate poop all over the place. Okay, with that out of the way, we should be able to wrap up the episode. We have a pretty solid start. We don't have to worry about anything immediately, we now can take our sweet time to expand the base and continue doing our research. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching and supporting this series. I'm really hoping this is going to be the one we can take to 100 episodes and beyond. With that out of the way, have a great time and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next episode. Bye bye.